As Jesus uh, neared his death, he made a farewell address uh, to his followers. Uh, and the theme of love is powerful throughout the Holy Scriptures. And in this sermon titled, Other Centered Love, Amen, It Is So. Uh, so when Jesus knew that his hour had come, uh, the gospel writer says, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Amen? And that's in verse 13, which uh, we read. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. 14, 15. Amen? And, we, and now, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. 15, 9. Amen? Uh, the meaning of abiding. Amen? Uh, these words about love help us to understand the meaning of of Jesus' command to abide in him, uh, to understand uh, ourselves as living our lives within his own reality, as part of him in the body of Christ, as sheep of his flock, amen, as branches of the vine that bears rich fruit for a world hungry for love. Uh, you know, I spoke on last week on the fifth Easter Sunday about the vine and how he prunes and chops away and, and what he needs to do for those that are not connected, and that we need to remain connected to the vine. Uh, these words of love help us to understand what love really is, amen, and what it means to make our homes and, and how to abide in Jesus. Uh, John's gospel tells us that we are known uh, and cared for, as sheep are loved and cared for by the shepherd, who even lays down his own life for the flock, rather than running away as a hired hand. Amen? Because of that love, uh, we can trust the one who knows us intimately and cares for us tenderly. Amen? Uh, who holds our very lives in that care. We are known and held and loved, but we are commanded to, to belong to one another, uh, to care for one another, and to love one another. Uh, man, I, may I add also that it, it says to pray for one another. Amen. Uh, the, the scripture tells us to pray even for our enemies. Amen. Uh, this is the kind of obedience, not blind obedience, but trusting obedience that Jesus inspires us and models for us. Amen. For he has lived his own life in trusting obedience to God the Father. Amen. This kind of love and trust is where we live our lives and live out our faith. In him we move and live and have our being. Amen. Amen. These laws aren't harsh or burdensome. The word commandment isn't legalistic, uh, doesn't refer to a harsh code of burdensome laws. John's gospel doesn't even focus on the commandment of the law, um, as the other gospels do. Amen? John's theme is love, and to obey is to love. This command is not the but, in I love you, but, uh, but rather it is the and in I love you and I want you to love one another. Or maybe it's even better to put the word so. Uh, I have loved you, so you must love one another. Amen. This unselfish love that binds us together in a community just as it binds it on our relationship with him. With who? With Jesus. He tells us is, is the path of true joy. The kind of joy that we can abide in. Amen. Oh, glory to God. <clears throat> love 
enough to sustain a community. Amen. It, it isn't just for us. It's, it's not just for ourselves, but it is a community. It is a other centered love belonging to something greater than yourself. Love was crucial in the strengthening of little communities that John was addressing. <clears throat> just as the disciples uh, um, were about to experience their world imploding, as uh, Jesus faced death and those disciples ran for cover, amen, so the Jonah 9, and, and the Jonah 9, if, if you know, never heard that impression, it, it, it's talking about the Christians that came after John, amen. Uh, in that Jonah 9 community, a generation or two later, were facing all the sorts of persecution and ostracism because of their faith. Um, and really no different than many of us do today in many parts of the world. Even right here in the USA, where liberalism has become almost an enemy of what we stand for. Amen? They, uh, 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 they might have been tempted to turn inward, loving God, of course, and or one another, and concentrating on their pure and only survival. Instead, Jesus lays out on them a different ethic, one that will transform the world rather than judge and run away from it. Amen? The truth test, being rooted in love, Jesus commanded to love, uh, to love provides a clear and comprehensive framework for the forming of values in every age, in every situation, no matter how different our cultures or our technologies or our sophistication becomes. Amen? We might ask ourselves about every uh, decision and choice and plan and vision. Is it rooted in love? Amen? Does it bear fruit for the kingdom of God? That is the true test of whatever our convictions are, whatever we aspire to be. Is it rooted in love? And does it bear fruit to the kingdom of God? Amen? Love, of course, doesn't mean that romantic, uh, ephemeral, ephemeral uh, feeling that may fuel our popular music, our films, uh, and all too often our own personal quest for love. Being other-centered uh, rather than self-centered, uh, even to the point of giving up our lives suddenly, or over a period of time, or even a lifetime, amen, fulfills the law of Christ. That's how I see my love for my wife. I do not see it as me uh, giving it up right away, although that may possibly be a time where I have to do that. But it is a, the dying of self for her. It is the love that I have for my wife on a daily basis that I lay my life for that love. Purity codes and legalisms fall away, amen? How well we know the challenge of being other-centered in our culture with mobility, with career pressure, with distractions, and overload calendars. It's different even to make room. It is very difficult to uh, even make room for, for a friendship nowadays in a fast life that we live, amen? We don't even stay around long enough to get to know one another, uh, let alone care for one another. Amen? And yet, this gospel keeps talking about staying, about abiding, about making our home in God, in the body of Christ. How different that is from this day and age where we are living a microwave age, amen, an instant age, amen. But here God talks about slowing down, about remaining in him, about loving in time, endless, loving the way Jesus loves. I remember in the cross-style seminary, before the ecumenical university was only a thought uh, in Bishop Redfern's mind and heart, and is today a vibrant, intricate part of the fellowship of ministers. When Dr. Stephen Manley said and <clears throat> that we were called to love Jesus and love the way Jesus loved, 
knowing the heart of Jesus and loving him are the same thing. Amen? These are the words of our great master, our great teacher that we have in the gospel. That's the ministry. And, of course, we're all called to be ministers, amen, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So his words tells us that Jesus has chosen us to love the world. The mystery of the, of the ministry is that we have been chosen to make our own limited and very unconditional, very conditional love the gateway to the unlimited and unconditional love of Christ, our God. Amen? I, I need to repeat that because I made a fumble the words. So let me just say that again. Our, the mystery, ministry, the mystery of the ministry is that we have been chosen to make our limited and very conditional love the gateway, the, 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 the leading to, uh, to the unlimited and unconditional love of God. Amen? Amen? We are the gateway. Amen? Uh, what would this kind of love look like? This is a lofty ideal that we might wonder what kind of love would look like. Uh, love is definitely more than nice words and warm affection. Amen? My uh, wife often likes to refer to say to me, you know, that's nice that you said that, but what you doing? Amen? So sometimes our action, and love is action, uh, is more important than just the words. Amen? We must remember that communion, and today is Holy Communion Day. Amen? For many Christians, uh, some practices throughout, you know, very various weeks, uh, uh, different weeks, but normally most Christians do it on the first Sunday. Amen. So we must remember that communion or kenonia, kenonia, uh, includes the sharing of the human resources, material goods, and communal fellowship. You know, it reminds me so much of our founding fathers right here in the United States, where they uh, committed not just to fight, uh, not just to be a part of, but they committed all their finances, everything that they had to the effort of being free. Amen? Uh, a commitment to solidarity uh, towards unity and witness in a broken and divided world. Amen? What is the context? The concrete situation in which you preach this text on Sunday mornings. I challenge preachers, amen, you preachers, amen, uh, who are listening on, on YouTube or Facebook or in this social media that, that this is uh, playing on, uh, and the churches, uh, to live out this text by strengthening communities of solidarity, uh, by affirming diversity, by promoting healthy relationship in families and communities, embracing strangers, and <clears throat> promoting intercultural and interreligious dialogues, amen? And all that means is that we become ecumenical, amen? We become more than just self, amen? Uh, what is the path of love and joy? What is your role as a pastor or preacher, amen? I suggest that we all turn to the text of John's gospel for guidance. Uh, for here, Jesus helps his disciples, including us, amen, uh, face what lies ahead with faith that can be described as trust. This is the preacher's task as well. In each generation, a word of reassurance. The earliest disciples face impending loss and grief. The Jordan 9 uh, community faced persecution and marginalization, marginalization, amen? And the people of Haiti, Uganda, Liberia, and many other nations face today the same violence, the same persecution, the same injustices. If we read this text in its own setting, we see that in the very next verse, Jesus' words are about the opposition, even hatred that his followers will face. If the world hates you, he says, uh, be aware that it hated me before it hated you. Amen? And you can find that in verse 18. 
the reassurance of this verse and the promise of verse 16. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the father will give you whatever you ask of him in my name. Let me emphasize the importance uh, of reading this week's passage along with uh, the verses that are surrounding it in verse 16, taken out of the context of Jesus' discourse on the true vine, amen, and understood solely in terms of God rewarding a, disi a disciplined prayer life by fulfilling specific requests, has wreaked all sorts of spiritual havoc amongst our in the, throughout the centuries, amen? Jesus is teaching us that we need to know about prayer, not as a list, what we need to know about prayer, not as a list of requests for what we think that we need, but at, for the power of love for the world, even though the world responds to us, uh, our love with hatred, amen? Jesus knew it wouldn't be easy. Jesus knew that it wouldn't be, uh, that it wasn't going to be easy. For his, uh, uh, for this little band of disciples, Amen, and or for the church that followed them, Amen, the martyrs, Amen, before us, Amen, uh, for each one of us struggling to live out our faith in the face of everything uh, that challenges it, challenges it. Uh, in this farewell address, he reassures us that we face <coughs> uh, these things not as service but as friends, uh, as the one in his circle who have uh, been let in on the big picture, so to speak, amen, uh, to reign, uh, uh, the reign of God and given our role in the bringing it in, amen, bringing in his reign, amen. Ironically, there are times when the world uh, seems to go ahead of the church, uh, amen, in, in bringing in this reign of justice and peace. Uh, if you think about uh, women's rights, or even the example that we have nowadays, uh, the growing LGBT community and its rights, the church is often far behind uh, uh, in the wider uh, society is uh, recognizing uh, the full humanity and considerable gifts and rights of all people, regardless of who they are. Amen. We tend to lag behind and be judgmental or be uh, uh, self-righteous in front of them. Amen. Whether it be women or in this case, I was talking about in the latter, the LGBT community. Amen. And so uh, and I have been guilty myself. Amen. God forgive me. And so studies indicate that a growing number of young and not so young people, all, alas, think of the church in a hateful, judgmental, and hypocritical way. Granted, these are hard words for us to hear, especially those of us who love the church and experience it very differently. Amen? Uh, spiritual, but not religious. It is also not surprising that there's a growing number of people that, claim, uh, that don't claim any religion affiliation at all, uh, even though they think of themselves as spiritual. Amen. Uh, this is called a reflection and humble self-examination of the church, not just uh, lament or, or uh, certainly not criticism or complaint about uh, those that we have lost or, um, or have alienated uh, or failed to attract. Indeed, we need to understand why the world hates us before we take a comfort in these words of Jesus in order to avoid self-righteousness, a thorny question that one uh, sermon uh, can resolve. A thorny question that one sermon cannot resolve. My little sermon cannot resolve that question, amen? <laughs> How we have alienated and, and uh, uh, separated ourselves from certain people because of who they are and what they think, amen? Uh, we need to come together and love all, amen? We don't have to be heroes either, uh, as some have been called to be. It's hard enough uh, to give our lives slowly, day by day, in love for the world. We live in a country that uh, continues to debate the identity of whether we are a Christian nation or not. 
regardless of what it seems uh, or of the separation of church and state or the guaranteed freedoms of religion to all, including non-Christians. Perhaps we should ask uh, why so many Christians cry out socialism every time our nation moves towards uh, a greater sharing with one another uh, and tries to uh, alleviate the suffering of those who are marginalized. Uh, just as Jesus commanded us to do, I call that love. Amen? I do not call that socialism. I call that love. Uh, a contemporary challenge uh, to Christians is what Gandhi once said. I said, uh, and I quote, I like your, Chris your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are unlike your Christ. And... <coughs> To go with that, there is a story of a Native American that stood up and looked out mostly at a mostly white audience and said, regardless of what the New Testament says, most Christians are individualists with no real experience of community. We, he paused for a moment and then continued, let's pretend that you, are, that you were all Christians. If you were Christians, you would not, you would no longer accumulate, in other words, store up for yourselves. But yes, you would share everything you had with us and with everyone else. You would actually love one another, and you would treat one another as if you were family. His eyes were piercing as he asked, why don't you do that? Why don't you live that way? Let's pretend that we are all Christians, amen? What would that look like in this world? How might it be different from the way we live today? Nowadays, it seems that many people see the church membership as something we choose, something that we shop for as, uh, as, as other needs of our lives. Uh, and yet Jesus here says that, he, that we did not choose him. Rather, he chose us. Amen? Doesn't our chosenness, our being chosen by Christ, just uh, end up up in the com consumerist approach of being Christians. Did you understand that? In other words, uh, uh, we are saying that we're shopping around because we're choosing a church. But what Christ is saying is that he has chosen us to be a part of the church, his church. Amen. So rather than expecting a church to fill our needs, uh, are, we, are we called instead to seek to fill the needs of others in, uh, in our doing? Amen? So find our own deepest needs are met. Amen? That's how they're met, by finding ourselves doing for others. Amen? How does being a member of a church afford us the possibility of both space and time for friendship, for caring for one another? Amen? Is the church a safe space where you can uh, be known and cared for or cared about? Uh, have you ever experienced another person or, um, or community of being for you? Amen? Instead of for them. Amen? Well, I pray that this sermon answers those prayers, that we are more than just self, that we are to be a community of love, that we are to love one another as Christ loved us and as he loved the Father, that we are to obey his commandments as he obeyed his commandments, that we are to do the things that God has commanded us to do, not because it's an obligation, not because it's a law, but it's because it is love. And that because he loved us, we love him, and we love him so much that we obey him. Amen? That is the true calling that we are called into ministry to be and to do. Amen? May God add a blessing to this particular word in your heart. Amen? Today, may it be rooted in you that you may love one another as he loves us. Amen? Amen. Amen. And with that, we ask that, that you, because you have heard this in his word, that you seek God, that you seek a church that is a, a God-loving church, a word of truth uh, 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 studying church, a praying church that loves God, and because they love God, they love you. Amen.
find that church and join that church. And if not, you can always come right here to First Ecumenical Church of Christ, of Jesus Christ, right here at the little chapel at 1026 Pope Street, and join us for our service every Sunday uh, at 5 o'clock. There are many other churches right here at this particular chapel, from 8 o'clock in the morning all the way to 6 o'clock in the evening. Every hour we have something going on and a different path of preaching right here. Amen? So you are welcome. You are welcome. And if you have not come to the knowledge of Christ, let me admonish you right now. Let me uh, 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 not admonish you, but actually beg you to come to him, that you may call out and, and say, I am a sinner. Thank mm -hmm. you.